Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over um, a 2006 AP Calculus release question on differential equations. We are just going to be focusing on the B part. Um, we are not going to be graphing since that's not often tested on the AP Calculus exams anymore. Alright, so for part B, we have, have considered the differential equation dy dx equals 1 plus y over x, where x is not equal to 0. Find a particular solution, y equals f of x, to the differential equation with the initial condition f of negative 1 equals 1, and state its domain. Okay? All right, so let's go ahead um, and solve this problem. The method we are going to use to solve this um, differential equation is a method of separation of variables, okay? So we have the differential equation dy dx equals 1 plus y over x. Now, what does the method of separation of variables involve? You want to have all the variables um, that are alike on one side of the equation and all the other variables uh, on the other side, okay? So we have y and x in this equation. So how about we organize all our y's on the left side and have our x's on the left side, okay? All right, so the y goes together, so we need 1 plus y as a unit to the left, and then the x as a unit to the right. To move um, the x's to the right, we'll simply multiply both sides by the x, the x, and multiply this by the x. And then if we want 1 plus y to the left side, we simply divide by 1 plus y on both sides. Okay? 1 plus y. Now on the left side, we have the x's divide out to 1. And then on the right side, the 1 plus y's divide out to 1. And now you're left with um, the differential equation 1 over 1 plus y dy equals 1 over x dx. Now what have we accomplished so far? We have separated the variables. Okay? Now that we have separated the variables, we can now find the antiderivative. Okay? Remember, to find a particular solution, we want to isolate y. We want to have y isolated. The moment we have y isolated, then we're done, okay? Now, the reason why we are finding the antiderivative to integrate both sides, that is the only way we can get rid of this dy, dy and dx components, okay? So we integrate both sides of our equation. Now, if you go over your um, integration rules, you know that one of the rules is the integral of 1 over um, u, uh, the u is the natural logarithm of the absolute value of u. Okay? And don't forget the plus c. So that's the rule we are going to apply here. Okay? So if you find an antiderivative, in this case, if you find an antiderivative, let's, let me extend the formula also. So if you also have the antiderivative of 1 over, let's say, ax plus b, dx, the antiderivative here will be uh, the natural logarithm of the absolute value of ax plus b divided by a. Okay, this is using integration by u substitution. If you apply that here, this would be what your um, integral will be. Okay, so in this case, our a is 1. So if we find the antiderivative of the left side, we are going to have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 1 plus y divided by a, which is just 1, divided by positive 1. And on the right side, uh, we are going to have the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x divided by 1, because a is 1. You can put the 1 there if you want. You don't really have to put it, okay? And there is a plus c component to both sides, but we just add it to this side, add the two c's together, and just call it c. All right, now... Um, what are we going to do next? In order to get y isolated, we need to find out what c is, okay? In order to find out what c is, we're going to use the initial condition 
f of negative 1 equals 1. So let's talk about that first, initial condition. So if the initial condition is that um, f of negative 1 equals 1, what does that mean? That simply means that x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 1. This represents a point, right? The point x, y, this is x right here, and this is y. All right, so what does, how does this help us? If we substitute these values into the equation, uh, it will enable us to find the value of c, okay? So when should we substitute? When should we make the substitution to find c? That's the question most students ask. Well, you find the value of c after resolving the absolute value signs of both sides of the equation, okay? So if we have that resolved, then we are less likely to make errors associated with signs. Okay, so we have the not, we have the, um, <clears throat> let me change the color, the natural logarithm of the absolute value of 1 plus y equals natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus c. So, um, in order to get rid of this natural logarithm situation here, we are going to um, exponentiate both sides using e as the basis. So we're going to have we're going to have e big e's on both sides, and the left side e to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of one plus y equals e to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus c. All right. On the left side, since e and ln are inverses, they cancel out. So we have the absolute value of 1 plus y equals, now does this cancel out? Absolutely not, because we have the c there. So what we can do is we can separate these into two. We can write this as e to the ln of x, right? times e to the c. Well, how is this possible? If you remember your product property of exponents, if you have a to the x times a to the y, what do you do here? You add the exponents because the bases are identical, a to the x plus y. Now, if we do the reverse, that is exactly what we're doing here. We have the sum of exponents, so we're decomposing it back to a product of factors, okay? So that's how we have the situation here. Okay, let's not forget our absolute value. So put the absolute value there. Now, on the right side, this e and ln inverses, they cancel out. So we have the absolute value of 1 plus y equals the absolute value of x times e to the c. So we can basically just look for e to the c and put it back here, and we can solve the, the problem that way, okay? All right, so let's see, how do we find e to the c? First of all, we have absolute value here and absolute value here. How do we get rid of that? We have to write it as plus or minus one plus y equals plus or minus x times e to the c. Now, how do we know if it's positive or negative? We are gonna go back to our point. The initial condition was negative one, one, what do you notice about y? y is what? y is positive, okay? So what does that mean here? We're going to take the positive sign. On the left side, we're going to have positive 1 plus y. How about x? What do we see with x? x is what? x is negative. x is negative. So we're going to use a negative sign here. So we're going to have... Um, uh, negative x times e to the c. This is also important because it tells us the domain, okay? x is great less than zero, I'm sorry. x is less than zero. How do we know x is less than zero? Well, because negative one is less than zero. So we're going to include this fact in our solution, okay? Because we were asked to state the domain. All right, so now we're gonna now substitute the values in. How do we know that this is the time? Notice we've resolved the absolute value on the both on both variables. All right. So now we are going to plug it in. We'll have one plus one equals 
negative negative 1 e to the c. So 1 plus 1 is 2 equals e to the c. So we don't need to find out what c is. e to the c being equal to 2 is sufficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this back into this equation right here. So we're going to substitute this back into this equation. Remember, the goal is to isolate y. Okay? That's, that's the um, ultimate goal. So when we make this substitution, um, we're going to have 1 plus y equals negative x times uh, 2. Okay? And then we're, that yields 1 plus y equals negative 2x, make it look pretty, and then I'll uh, get y by itself, subtract 1 from both sides, we have y equals negative 2x minus 1, okay? So this is your particular solution, and the domain is x is less than 0, all right? So there goes your final result. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other full tutorials such as this. If you have any questions or comments, please include it in the comment section below and we'll be glad to address it as early as possible. More clips can be found on mathcutserve.com under Calculus or AP Calculus. Feel free to visit that also. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.